Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Earth Survival Guide. This is going to be my last episode of this little Minecraft Earth mini-series. I plan to do more episodes from the app in future, but those are going to be more build tutorial focused and maybe some occasional progress updates, but nothing that's going to interrupt the Java Minecraft Survival Guide series, which is going to be returning tomorrow. But before we leave Minecraft Earth for the foreseeable future, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of stuff that I've found out about this app, specifically the most important question on most Minecrafters' lips, how to find diamonds in the game. So I've been playing this game for quite a while now. I've gotten about three or four solid days worth of play out of it. That's like a roughly two hours each day. I've got myself a decent amount of XP and rubies and that kind of stuff all through playing the game. No microtransactions involved, just a decent solid amount of playtime. If you go into my inventory here and we sort by rarity, you will see that I already have myself four diamonds, a decent amount of redstone and gold, and some more precious resources like minecarts and redstone lamps, TNT, redstone repeaters, and that kind of stuff, and a pretty solid amount of other blocks. If you go back through to quantity, you'll see that I've got about a thousand or so cobblestone, a decent amount of dirt and other building materials, wood and wool, and that kind of thing. So we'll go into that stuff a little bit later on, how to best acquire those resources, especially the ones that aren't gained through tappables, because there's some really interesting stuff you can do in this app. But first of all, we need to talk about how to find diamonds in this game, and then about whether or not diamonds are actually useful. You'll notice that when you go into the tools section of the inventory, I haven't crafted any diamond tools, even though I've found some diamonds already. And there's a good reason for that, which I will go into a little bit later. But first, let's switch to the iPhone footage and let's talk about where you can find diamonds in Minecraft Earth. Now the key, of course, is going to be to go through a few adventures, because tappables will not get you anything as rewarding as diamonds. They will get you things like redstone repeaters. On the epic scale of things, you will get TNT and redstone components for some of the more interesting loot you get out of those, but the rest of the tappables just provide things like wood and cobblestone, basic building materials, resources, animals, that kind of thing. So you're really going to want to look in adventures if you want to find diamonds, and so far I have only found two adventures which actually provide diamonds, actually have diamonds in them. And there may be more out there that I just haven't found yet, but for the most part I've been searching through every adventure that I can get my hands on, and I've only found two. The first of which, ironically enough, is the first adventure that I've ever done. And this is a medium tier adventure. It's the one that looks like this, where you've got this wood surround of stairs and trapdoors and jungle fences. And then further down, as you look into the adventure, you see a bunch of gravel and TNT set up in various spots connected by redstone and attached to levers. Now, as far as I can tell, there are three tiers of adventure, and you'll find this one generating as a medium tier. The first tier is the kind of beginner ones, which are just a grassy hillside that you click on on the map. The second tier, the middle tier, are a grassy hillside, but with a kind of stone door built into the side of it and a skeleton standing nearby. And there is a third, more difficult tier, which is more likely to contain rare resources and also mobs to fight. And that one is a stony hillside with iron bars set into the side, a sign on the back and two skeletons standing around, maybe even a mob spawner as part of the icon as well. Now this one spawns as a medium tier adventure and it seems to be relatively common as far as I can tell. I was able to get four diamonds all from this adventure, meaning that I was able to get it to spawn four times. And there's really not much to worry about. There's a couple of mobs that might show up, but there's a couple of skeletons usually will just walk into the lava around the outside. And once you take out that pillar of gravel and mine out this patch of diorite over here, you will find that underneath that block of diorite there, is a single piece of diamond ore, which remember you will need to bring an iron pickaxe with you if you want to obtain the diamond, but there it is. I got myself a diamond right there. The rest of this can all be dealt with with stone tools, a stone pickaxe, a sword to take care of the mobs, and maybe even a stone axe if you want to clear away the wooden components a little bit faster. I don't know if there is a name for this map internally, they don't seem to have names when you load them into the world or anything, but in my head I've been calling this one Four Corners, because each corner of this little underground dungeon area has a pillar of gravel like that suspended above a stone brick, and when you take the stone brick out, the gravel falls and breaks on a torch just the way it does in regular Minecraft. You just take out that stone brick block there, and the gravel all falls and breaks like so. Underneath each of these is not, unfortunately, a piece of diamond ore, but there are rare resources under each one of them. You have a diamond under the one I just showed you. This one here has coal. The one, if you turn around to the left, you would 
could see has iron underneath it, and that's the iron I got the first time I played this adventure. And then this one over here on the right hand side actually has some gold ore underneath. So if you can farm this adventure a couple of times, it actually proves quite lucrative for all sorts of rare resources, not just for diamonds. There are a couple of mobs, like I said, just hiding in the corners here and there, but they don't tend to give you any trouble. And things like creepers and zombies can't get up onto the surface to attack you. Now I have taken apart most of this map on subsequent playthroughs. I came back with some better tools, I made myself a stone axe so I could break the rest of this wood a little bit faster, and I have taken apart the centre of the map here where the largest concentration of stone is to see if there was any more, uh, you know, diamond ore hidden underneath here. As far as I can tell, there is not. I think I've mined out any places that it would be, and there's a skeleton hiding at the bottom of the map under some stone bricks, but there doesn't seem to be a diamond ore down there. So once you've got the resources you want from this map, you may as well just back out to the overworld map and uh, carry on, <laughs> because if you can find another one of these adventures that will spawn in a nearby area, if you go to an area that spawns adventures quite regularly, you're likely to get all of the same stuff in exactly the same places. Meaning that if you get the same adventure to spawn three times, you are basically guaranteed three diamonds. Now you may remember I mentioned a second adventure, and unfortunately I didn't get any footage of that one because it was a rare one, it was a tier 3 adventure that I've only ever been able to get to spawn once, so I ended up recreating it here in my creative test world in Minecraft Java Edition to give you a rough idea of what I found just in case you stumble upon this one yourself. Now the cow has wandered off, but when you load up this adventure for the first time you get a room that sort of looks like this to my memory, it was a couple of days ago now so I can't remember it a block for a block but there was a kind of cobblestone shack with wooden floors and up here there was a chicken and down here there was a cow you can kill the cow of course you can just get like as much beef and leather and stuff as you would normally get from a cow that's all fine and I'm going in with the tools that I thought I had when I took on this adventure the first time around so if you break those let me put myself in survival mode actually just to make this kind of a realistic experience here you break those I'm pretty sure there was an iron block but it broke down into iron ingots up here so there was something that I could break that gave me iron, but I'm pretty sure it was just a block of iron that broke down into ingots of iron. You can kill the chicken as well if you want to, or you can just let it roam around the adventure plate. Not a big problem, except if you can't hit the chicken like I can just now. But anyway, there were a few trap doors underneath here, and I'm pretty sure I just broke these because you can't like hop down into trap doors in adventures. One of the things they do with Minecraft Earth adventures, in spe specifically the adventures, is give you a forced perspective. So you kind of have to look down into a hole and you are limited in how you can interact with the world just by what you can see, which makes it a little bit difficult to handle some of these. But what I ended up doing was just bashing away at the trapdoors with my fists or a pickaxe until they broke. I'm pretty sure pickaxes do still mine stuff faster in Minecraft Earth, even though they don't in regular Minecraft, which is fine. Underneath it, there were a couple of blocks like granite or something like that, and that opened up a scene that looked a little bit like a mineshaft. And they've actually designed a lot of these around the aesthetics of mineshafts, so it's kind of like, I wasn't expecting all that much, but it was a tier 3 adventure, so I figured this is probably something a little bit more difficult. For some reason, the trapdoors all opened inward like that as well, so you probably end up taking out a few of those. But down here, you had one of these typical kind of like pit prop style things, and then when you broke a block underneath here, I, or it might have been underneath this wooden beam, I'm not entirely sure, but I think I broke away a block of wood and there was a diamond ore underneath, and it was quite close to the surface like this. So I thought, okay, probably a trap, I need to be a little bit careful. I mined that out, and I think I mined out the block in front of it first, and I was hearing skeleton noises anyway, but underneath it, there was a whole heap of skeletons that could all suddenly see me and shoot at me, and unfortunately, <laughs> unlike in Java Minecraft, they didn't immediately start shooting each other like this. Instead, they all shot at me, and I died pretty quickly. Now here's the thing about death in Minecraft Earth, and this is important, it's something you should know really before you try and take on some of these more difficult adventures. If you die in Minecraft Earth, you die for real- no, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you die in Minecraft Earth during one of these adventures, you not only lose all of the resources that you collected so far in that adventure, you also lose anything you brought with you on your hotbar. You don't lose anything that was kept in your inventory because you kind of create a separate inventory when you're doing adventures, but if you brought a pickaxe with you, if you brought a sword with you, if you brought some more sophisticated tools or anything else that you brought on your hotbar when you started the adventure, 
If you die, you lose that as well. And unlike in core Minecraft, in the regular Minecraft game we're all used to, there is no going back and getting that stuff again. You can't go and retrieve your items. They are gone forever. So I lost a stone sword, a stone pickaxe, and an iron pickaxe that I had used to mine the diamonds, as well as losing the diamond and any other resources I'd collected from the surrounding area. The iron ingots I mentioned getting from that iron block were also lost. And then... I was left in a bit of a situation because I didn't have any more tools that I'd already pre-crafted. So it definitely meant going back through the crafting interface and waiting for the tools to craft again. And uh, I've started since then keeping backup tools all the time. So if I need to go and replay an adventure to recover a little bit of what I've lost, I don't need to wait around. I craft... Uh, tools and stuff whenever I'm not crafting something else in this game just so I can always have backup stuff coming in 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 quick supply whenever I need it to but that is ultimately why I haven't made any tools with these diamonds why I haven't gone ahead and crafted the diamonds I've gathered into something yet is because there is the potential for these tools to disappear in the blink of an eye if I bring them into the wrong adventure and get ambushed by skeletons. And that's not something I'm entirely comfortable with yet, because they are irretrievable at this point. And there is no way of crafting armor in Minecraft Earth yet, so you can't really be any more defended than you already are. It relies much more on your reflexes than on any kind of forward planning. But you don't need diamond tools to build on build plates. Build plates are effectively creative mode. You can break or place blocks however you want to without any tools whatsoever. You would only need diamond tools in adventures, but adventures are also the places that they would ultimately be most easily lost. And I think most players' instinct, being regular Minecraft players, is to gather diamonds so that you can progress through the game. But on Minecraft Earth, diamonds aren't required for progression, at least not yet. I don't know if they're going to implement stuff in future, but what do you do with a diamond pickaxe in Minecraft? I mean, yeah, you keep it for a long period of time and it's the only tool you need to use so you don't need to keep making more, but you mainly need it to mine obsidian. And what are you going to do in Minecraft Earth? Go to the nether? I don't think so. There is no means to go to the nether. I think you can still acquire obsidian, and it is probably the case that if you put lava and water together and make obsidian, you will only be able to mine that obsidian with a diamond pickaxe. However, I would argue that it's probably much easier to go to a custom build plate of your own, get a bucket of lava, a bucket of water, and make the obsidian that way, and then pick it up using pickup mode, than it would be to bring a bucket of water to an adventure, turn all the lava there into obsidian, and then mine it with a diamond pickaxe you could potentially lose. Right now, diamond tools are in Minecraft Earth for bragging rights and for nothing else. And that may change in future. Like I said, they might have some stuff planned where you need diamond tools to get to a certain amount of things. Maybe if they add nether-based adventures in future, it's only going to be possible to go the, to those if you've acquired diamonds already. They will probably ultimately add in a quest in which making a diamond pickaxe is the ultimate goal, like they currently have one for wooden tools and stone tools. But really, you don't need diamonds for tools in Minecraft Earth right now. And so... If you're interested in finding diamonds, that's great, but I would recommend keeping hold of them and not using them because losing them in this app is going to be a much more frustrating experience than it is even in Minecraft. To complete this point and to kind of emphasize quite how precious these diamond tools are going to be if you decide to make them, I will mention that crafting a diamond pickaxe in this timer-based crafting system the app has takes eight hours. So it is an overnight crafting operation. You will want to leave this diamond pickaxe crafting when you go to bed and wake up and it will maybe be done at that point. You don't want to be crafting this while you're walking around playing the game expecting to use it in five minutes. It's just not going to happen. And putting that amount of time into the crafting of it is going to be kind of a big deal for people and that's not something you want to lose lightly. So if you want my advice, keep those diamonds for now. Don't make diamond tools until there is a definite use for them. Or, at the very least, keep them until they implement some kind of enchanting system so you can enchant them with unbreaking and efficiency. Mending is probably not going to be a thing in this app because of how you acquire experience. <laughs> Unless they do some kind of crazy shenanigans with experience later on, I really doubt mending is going to be a factor in Minecraft Earth at all. But that being said, yeah, it's probably going to be worth crafting diamond tools in the position where they can be the most effective for you over the longest period of time, which is quite similar to Minecraft itself in a way, but at least this way you know that you're not going to lose your diamond tools in an adventure sometime. 
With that out of the way, let me highlight three really cool experiences that I've had with this app that I think are kind of unique and interesting about Minecraft Earth compared to core Minecraft, because I imagine that last segment, along with all of the concerns people have about microtransactions and so forth, might be putting people off this thing a little bit. If you just want to have your diamond tools and use them, I completely understand, but I feel like this app is actually kind of more special than some people are giving it credit for, and here is why. For a start, you acquire wool naturally through tappables. You get it from some chests and, and various other drops, but once you have started acquiring sheep and you have enough iron to make a set of shears, you can create a wool farm just using whatever build plates you have at your disposal. I'm here on the basic build plate, the one that you have at the very start of the game, and I'm just spamming sheep, just loading this build plate up with as many sheep as I can cram into this area, and then I can take my shears and I can shear all of the wool off of them, and I get to use those blocks. I don't have to acquire them through the tappables thing, the kind of Pokemon Go style map where you walk around and, and tap on stuff. I can literally shear these sheep in a miniature Minecraft world, now I have them. Once I've done that, I can use pickup mode to pick them all back up, they return to my inventory. Some of them even eat the grass as I'm doing this so that they could regrow their wool and I can shear them again one last time before I put them back in the box. But then the coolest part about that is that now, once I've picked up all of the wool, which I can just do by tapping on it, I'm probably getting about a stack of wool at this point, I can place the sheep back down on this build plate, and because it hasn't saved the fact that they are sheared sheep, they have their wool again, and I can just go ahead and tap on them with the shears as much as I want and collect even more blocks. I have a sheep farm here with the ability to collect as much wool as I want to use for building in build plates. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, perhaps because the game is still in early access, it's not possible to dye the wool, so you're working with white wool pretty much across the board, but coloured wool can still be acquired from tappables and a lot of the flowers and things that you need to create dye things like lapis you know there's cornflowers there's dandelions and even some of the two block tall flowers like sunflowers and rose bushes are in the game already so there's every opportunity that dyes will be added to the game in future just be added to the crafting interface and you'll be able to dye all of the colored wool for using in builds but the fascinating thing about this, the thing that I think makes this really important, is that they haven't restricted acquiring blocks like this to just the tappables walk around on the map kind of thing. You can actually get blocks from mechanics like this that are familiar to you if you're a Minecraft player. And perhaps my favourite example of this in action came when I managed to acquire a bucket of lava, having got a couple of buckets from tappables and taking a bucket to an adventure that I was fairly certain was going to have a lava source block in it. Because what you're seeing right here, my friends, your eyes do not deceive you, I'm about to make a cobblestone generator in Minecraft Earth. And the cool part is, it works. You can actually use pickup mode to harvest infinite blocks of cobblestone this way, the same way you would in vanilla Minecraft, in Skyblock, in so many other places where you've seen cobblestone generators work in the past. And cobblestone is one of those things you can just acquire all the time from the tappable stone icons on the world map, so it's not a big revelation. It's not getting resources that you couldn't get some other way, but the fact is this exists and it's possible to do it and it has all of the Minecraft physics that you are used to. So you could make smooth stone generators with this if you wanted to. When they add more redstone components to the game, you could automate this with pistons and have it actually push the blocks around a little bit to make them easier to tap on without damaging the rest of the environment. The fact is, it is possible. And I figured it was going to be possible when I tried it for the first time, but still somehow having infinite access to cobblestone through build plates like this feels like some sort of cheat code <laughs> that I've got when you should normally be acquiring them through tappables. But the fact is, they've left these Minecraft mechanics in the game so that we can make use of them. And that's what feels special about this. The last thing I wanted to share with you actually goes back to adventures. I found this tier 1 adventure where you pull a lever on the surface, the floor disappears, and you can look down into this room that has a few levers arranged on stone brick walls in there. And the first thought I had was, oh cool, okay, some levers that I can pull, maybe this is some kind of puzzle. And then I pulled one and it made a noise. And so I tried pulling the others and the second one from the left made a noise, but the first one on the left didn't. And that was kind of weird, and so I wasn't quite sure how to handle this. I figured, yeah, obviously this is either some kind of puzzle, or it's just them showing off that they can make sound effects with stuff that isn't necessarily wired up to redstone. 
But I figured, yeah, whatever, I'll probably just play around with the levers a little bit more. I'll have fun with this. I'll post a video on Twitter. And then I took the entire thing apart for the resources because I wanted some chiseled stone brick. So I figured I would do that. And as I rotated around the adventure and looked at it from the opposite angle, I was able to see that there were some redstone lamps lit on the opposite wall that might have corresponded with the positions of the levers. Two of them were lit, two of them were not lit, so I pulled the levers I'd broken out of my inventory and attached them. They just made some creepy sound effects and lit up the way you would expect redstone lamps to, but nothing else particularly happened. And so I thought, okay, great, this is probably some kind of puzzle. I will try it a couple more times if the adventure respawns, and maybe I'll just gather these resources from this one in the meantime. After a couple of attempts, I did get the adventure to respawn a couple of times, and I have cracked it. I now understand what this puzzle is. So I'm going to tell you the solution for it. If you don't want spoilers for that, if you want to discover it on your own, look away now. Okay, so this is the solution, or a solution at least, there might be multiple solutions. The first thing you need to do is either bring a lever, or take the lever from that pillar on the surface and crack in there manually using your pickaxe instead of having the lever destroy the floor there, because you will need a fourth lever to solve the puzzle in the room below. But it's actually fairly simple once you put that fourth lever in, because there are four levers on one side of the room, and on the opposite side of the room there are four corresponding redstone lamps. Two of them are lit, two of them are dark, so it kind of stands to reason, really, that you just need to switch on the levers on the opposite side of the room that correspond to the lit redstone lamps. So you place a lever on that pillar there, you switch off the one on that side, and then you switch on the first and third positions. And then a fanfare will play, and the game rewards you with four blocks of iron ore, which you can mine on the surface with a stone pickaxe. And this is really special, this is a puzzle adventure, this is not quite like some of the other adventures where you are just digging down and finding mobs and just trying to dig around helplessly until you can find the resources. This is actually a challenge to the players to use a little bit of logic and problem solving skills to resolve this problem and you get a reward. There is scope for them to add more adventures like this into the game in future, but this is the only one I have found so far, and yes, it does still make creepy sound effects when you destroy the redstone lamps, but you can take them away, you can destroy the entire thing if you want to. In fact, I recommend digging under this patch of granite over here because there are four gold ore blocks down there which you can grab if you've got an iron pickaxe on you. There are other materials dotted around the room as well, there's a coal deposit on one wall, go crazy, but I think it's really cool that they've put this kind of thing into the game instead of just expecting the player to go through a bunch of pseudo survival experiences, and I think I would love to see some more stuff like this in the game in future. In fact, the scope for this kind of thing broadens exponentially if you consider that player-created build plates could ultimately be placed in the world publicly at some point in future. It's not possible to do in the app right now, but the scope for it is there, and that is really cool because the map-making community could get hold of this and could place little puzzles and complete the monument-style stuff for people to do. You could even create a scavenger hunt across a city where if you want to place some diamonds down for people to find you could put them in item frames in build plates and just release a couple of cryptic clues online and then people could go and hunt down those diamonds in the real world. That is the reason really why I'm so excited about Minecraft Earth and I hope you guys are too and I hope you've enjoyed this little Minecraft Earth mini series here on the channel. The Java Edition Survival Guide will be back tomorrow but for now thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Earth Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care! Bye for now.